Buenos días Good morning, everyone. My name is Valentina Morales, a specialist in rural development of the rural office uh, of the FAO for Latin America and the Caribbean, and would like to warmly welcome it, all participants in this session. This is a session of the cycle for the exchange of experiences on uh, family farming registries. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that this event uh, has a simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, English, French, Arabic, and Portuguese. Uh, probably, uh, we're presently adjusting the interpretation in some of the channels, but that will be working perfectly well in a few minutes, uh, so thank you for your patience. I also remind you that this session is being recorded, and you'll be able to find it in the uh, family agriculture platform that we will be sharing with you during the event. This is a cycle of uh, uh, technical exchanges of experiences on family farming registry seeks uh, to promote uh, cooperation and the exchange of experiences uh, based on the UN uh, decade on uh, family farming and also the priorities established for Latin America and the Caribbean in uh, Santiago, Chile in 2022. This uh, dialogue seeks to share lessons learned and uh, challenges in the development of family farming registries and their link uh, to policies uh, aimed at strengthening the sector throughout the world. This event uh, is conducted by the regional platform on family ag uh, agriculture managed uh, by the regional FAO office for Latin America and the Caribbean with the technical support of the unit uh, for family farming participation. This uh, event is coordinated by the Secretariat of the Central American uh, Farming Council, uh, Family Farming Unit of Mercosur, via its pro tempore chair of Brazil and the National Coordination of the Ministry for Agricultural Development and, Agri and Family Farming. In the first session, we were already able to reflect on the importance of developing an institutional framework for family uh, farming and on that that occasion, we were able to uh, listen to the experiences of Panama and Croatia. We were able to view how the process uh, to produce uh, legislation enabling us uh, to be able to view these key sectors so that we can have differentiated policies in place, um, highlighting the needs of family farming. In that session, we were also able to view the importance of uh, participation in these processes uh, with uh, dialogue for its construction and its implementation. The recording of that uh, first uh, session is available in our platform in uh, the link uh, that we will be sharing uh, uh, during this uh, second session. Uh, today, the objective is to get to know experiences uh, to determine how the design and implementation has been done for family farming registries and to uh, consider the main elements uh, when we begin to work with uh, key registries to guarantee its effectiveness as instruments uh, for the implementation of differentiated policies. We have uh, the pleasure of having representatives from Kenya and uh, Georgia that will share their experiences in a few more minutes. And after these uh, two presentations by our panelists, uh, we will also have a 40-minute uh, uh, Q&A session so that we can uh, discuss uh, these cases that have been presented. And so please take note of the queries that you may have um, so that you can then uh, present them via the chat. The, this session will be guided by a whole series of guiding questions that seek to highlight uh, elements uh, during the design and implementation of family farming registries, such as the stages of the implementation process, uh, tools uh, that are used, uh, cost uh, structures, incentives, uh, validation processes, and also challenges. In view of time, I'd like to ask our panelists uh, to uh, deliver the presentations in 25 minutes, and I'll be letting you know that you have two minutes left uh, for your intervention so that you can bring your presentation to a close. To begin with this uh, presentation, this session, I would like to offer the floor to Mr. Wilfredo Lauch, who is a, a consultant uh, for the escalation of the agricultural platform of Kenya. Uh, you have uh, 20 minutes for your presentation, and please uh, confirm that you're able to 
share your screen so that we can begin with your presentation. And I'll let you know when you have two minutes. Thank you very left. much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Wilfred Lord from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Mr. Stuart Pippen, who's also on the call. Let me just attempt to share my screen and then um, I will try and uh, proceed as advised. Has been introduced. I am a government and uh, FAO liaison. So my job essentially is to move between government and FAO to make sure that information that is required is, is going between the two parties as we do implementation of the FAO Kenya office. Um, I want to take you through a presentation that um, will try and um, show you what we have learned and the kind of things we have done in terms of developing a pharma registry for the country, um, which is equivalent to um, the farming households registry that we have been talking about. So I'll try and be um, quick. The presentation is uh, quite general, but I have a few lessons learned that I think will be good for us to discuss. So without much ado, let me proceed. So in this overview, I uh, will be talking about what led to the effort that we have just undertaken in terms of registering farmers, what needs were there. Then we did a pilot as FAO in the country. I will share the experiences from there. And then what we are doing right now as we scale that up to develop a national registry of farming households, and then some of the challenges and lessons that we have learned, then we'll be able to take some Q&A towards the end. So just in case you're wondering where Kenya is, there is, the, there is where Kenya is on the map. We are at the east coast of Africa, and um, we are smack on the equator. So let's move on to that. In terms of backgrounds, uh, background and needs, uh, this actually this exercise came about as a result of a request from the government of Kenya um, to develop an information management platform that would allow us to keep track of all the farming households. In Kenya, about two-thirds of all rural households are farming households. In fact, literally everyone who lives in the city has a farm somewhere in their rural household. And uh, there was a big challenge in terms of um, having that information in a central place. There were lots of um, registrations ongoing from different players, UN, um, some NGOs, some private sector companies, and uh, the government itself. But what lacked essentially was a centralized repository where we could all be able to access this information. And therefore, the rest of the presentation will show you how we have tried to address this problem and uh, where we are at. So as I said, about two-thirds of households in Kenya are farming households, and it's estimated to be about 6 million households that are engaged in one form or the other of uh, farming household level. So I mentioned the pilot. In about 2020, 2021, the FAO Kenya office, uh, after being approached, raised some money from the FAO regional office, about 300,000 US dollars, and we undertook a pilot in the country. Um, we were actually building a system based on experiences that were um, being carried forward from other countries in, in Africa that FAO had worked on, where some registries had been successfully developed, and most notably Zambia. Um, and so we took, we brought this system into Kenya and, first of all, engage the government in um, customizing it and finding out where the areas of commonality would be and where the differences were. We then um, built a system that was targeting the Kenyan um, the Kenyan um, scenario. And then we undertook a pilot in a subsection of the country where we registered farming households to make sure to demonstrate that the platform actually worked. And we were able to do that successfully and collect some data. One of the main things that came out of this that uh, got us moving forward was our partners, the government, were able to see that this data was coming in real time and therefore we could actually monitor this data as it came in and correct any data that seemed um, suspicious or out of place. And so after this successful pilot, there was quite a bit of interest in scaling this up and uh, we are actually now in the process of uh, doing this a full blast. So the kind of the picture you see there on the right is an example of what was going on on the ground. Um, the enumerators after training, they were using uh, digital tablet devices uh, about eight inches in diameter, and they were collecting data at the household, at the farming household level. So the picture you see there is an actual real farmer who's been interviewed by a real enumerator, and they're collecting data into the tablet and transmitting it in real time to a central database where now at um, the control room in uh, the capital, we could actually see this data coming in and look at all the relevant metrics. 
And so this has been carried forward into our national pilot um, registration that is ongoing at the moment that I'll speak about uh, momentarily. Mr. Wilfred, uh, sorry for interrupting. Would it be possible to speak a little slower for the Arabic translation? My apologies. Let me um, no, no, no. my speech. So maybe just to reiterate what I had said, we um, did a pilot, and uh, out of that pilot, we were able to collect data and demonstrate that the platform actually worked. And as a result of this, we got a lot of goodwill from the government itself, and uh, we moved forward now into doing a full-scale pilot, uh, rather a full-scale registration of farming households that I will speak about in a moment in the next slide. As I said, after the 2020 and 2021 pilot, uh, we had a, a, a year of 2022, which was an election year. So we sort of like dialed back our activities as that year passed by. We focused mainly on um, capacity building and review of um, our plans. And then in 2023, we kicked off on full farmer registration. And this was scaled up to all the sub-national regions. In Kenya, we have about 47 sub-national regions known as counties. And we are doing this registration in 45 out of the 47. The two that are left out are 98% uh, urban cities. And therefore, those were left out because of the uh, assumption that there was not much farming uh, going on there. But that's also under review because of um, urban farming that is coming up. Nevertheless, this has been scaled up to 45 um, counties, and uh, we have done several things so far. The picture you see there on your right is an example of one of the capacity buildings that we have been undertaking, where we have uh, trained extensively farm um, stakeholders from both the national and sub-county levels. So working with ag agricultural officers at both the national level and at the 47 sub-national levels, particularly the 45 that are part of the process now, we have uh, done training and we are kicking off this process. Interestingly enough, that process actually starts today, which is the 5th of September. So it's interesting we're giving this presentation today because this is the kickoff of the National Farmer Registration. After doing this uh, extensive training, which you can see there in, in point, uh, actually the third point there, which should be C, not B, we, uh, we involve the National Statistics Office, known in Kenya as the National Bureau of, of Statistics, to make sure that the methodology was sound and that the enumeration would be done in a way that would be statistically valid. So there have been part and parcel of that. The other key thing here to note is uh, that, as I mentioned in the previous slide, there had been uh, many projects and programs undertaking separate disjointed registrations of farming households. One of the key things that happened going forward to enable this is uh, though we consolidated all those efforts uh, by having the government be front and center in um, you know, bringing all players to the table. And with some additional funding we got from uh, the World Bank and from the Swedish Development Agency, FA was able to provide technical support to ensure that all the efforts were consolidated into one unified and comprehensive registration. So as we speak, uh, as this registration starts, we have uh, consolidated all the multiple efforts and we are creating a repository that will be shared by all the stakeholders who are previously undertaking separate disjointed um, registrations. We had uh, used a budget of about 300,000 US dollars for the initial pilot, which involved also customizing the system, so the system development there. There were staff costs uh, associated with uh, undertaking the exercise. And so that's why it was 300,000 USD. We estimate that this exercise in the 45 counties, which is about 95% of the country, is going to cost about 3.1 million US dollars. We have funding consolidated from these multiple projects that I've talked about. And uh, we have also a pocket of uh, funding straight from the World Bank and from the Swedish Development Agency and FAO itself. So the key point here is we are doing a national exercise now based on consolidation of effort and funding, and we are moving forward quite well with it. 
here I want to share some few pictures. As we say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So going from the top row to the from left to right and then the lower row. The very first picture you see there, if you can see my cursor, that row, this picture is the one that was there previously. It's an example of the kind of capacity building we were doing, which was decentralized. So we were going out to the counties, to the sub-national levels, and doing the training there to make sure there is uptake at that level. There was a lot of recruitment to be done. It's just an, this is not the actual line of enumerators being recruited, but just an example to show you there was a lot of interest. In fact, as we speak, there are still some uh, recruitments that are ongoing in different counties because the number of applicants to for these positions was enormous and exceeded the requirement. Um, we also worked closely with the local government administration. So that you see here on the right-hand side, right, is an example of a sensitization taking place at the local governments where the local administration officers were brought on board and briefed on why this exercise was important. And they were essentially making sure that sensitization is done properly at the village and um, household level, door to door, literally, in meetings that in Africa we call barazas, where you call people in and talk to them about what's going on. And so these were important to get on board. They also helped to ensure security of the enumerators as they went out and also the security of the farmers as they were visited within their homesteads for purposes of enumeration. The picture at the bottom left here shows you one of the field activities that was undertaken. This is an example here of um, one uh, mission that we went on with uh, to test the system prior to doing the training. So here we had uh, local um, young people been involved in the exercise. And in this picture, they have been debriefed by a village elder who was just about to take them into a village and to identify the household, the farming households that they would then add to the database. So this exercise involved, um, you know, getting stakeholders uh, to understand what we were doing at all levels, from the national level to the village and to the household. Picture in the middle here, where there's a motorcycle, shows you one of the field tests subsequent to the initial one you see on the left, where now this was actually a day prior to collecting the data in some of these subnational counties, where now the elders were actually surveying some of the farms so that they could uh, guide the enumerators who would be coming appropriately and save time uh, and avoid them getting lost and things like that. The final bit in the bottom half here shows you a oath taking ceremony where because the data is sensitive and has personal identifying information in it, we required the enumerators working on the ground to swear an oath saying that they would manage this data as expected and not misuse the private information that they would be getting from the farmers. So the way it was done because of the large numbers is there would be a standard oath prepared and then we would have an administrator of oaths, a lawyer, in other words, come in and get everybody on oath. So this is happening currently in about um, in 45 of those um, sub-national regions we have talked about. And we estimate the number, total number of um, data collectors or enumerators will be between 15,000 and 20,000 who, who are hitting the ground as we talk now. So that's a quick overview of what was going on in terms of preparing for this. Let's take a look at some of the key challenges we faced as I try to use my remaining time. First of all, I said that there were multiple projects and programs which uh, were already undertaking this kind of exercise in a disjointed manner. And therefore, whenever you wanted to know how many farming households we had, it was difficult to establish that because everybody had their own piece of data somewhere. We also had a lot of um, requests to change these, um, to change, um, you know, what kind of data was being collected because different parties wanted to have their own um, data collected, perhaps based on what their specific program was interested in. So on just that point B, we actually spent a lot of time putting uh, people at, on, at the same table, around the table, to agree on some common parameters that could then be put in the common tool uh, so that everybody uh, got 
a bit of what they wanted, but not everything they wanted. We also experienced some issues, some complications due to our procurement and due process. Um, as we know in FAO, we have a stringent procurement procedures. So sometimes um, the government wanted to move faster than those procedures allowed. And uh, so this was also um, you know, a pain point at some point, but we managed to, to work with uh, within the allowable parameters. There was also a huge turnover uh, in some departments, um, government being government, and government employees being uh, expected to work anywhere in the country at uh, you know any time. Sometimes we had uh, trained individuals who then would be moved from that situation to somewhere else. So that meant retraining or um, you know making necessary adjustments there. Another challenge we faced was um, stakeholders who had different priorities. Some of them big um, donors who wanted to do different things. And so we had to find those who are willing to work with uh, our line of thought and um, try and narrow down to what was common. Then there was also an issue of technology. So because there were different options being put on the table, we eventually had to settle for the kind of technology that the uh, government was comfortable with and which the majority of people were happy with. Finally, what are some of the lessons we learned? So if I was to summarize that, we from this exercise, which is kicking off today, as I said, and data is already streaming. Actually, as I speak to you, I was logging on and checking that uh, we are literally getting sometimes a thousand records coming in every hour from across the board um, because it's taking our enumerators perhaps 20 to 30 minutes to interview a farmer and those records are flying in literally in real time now. We needed high level support, which we managed to get. So getting the um, minister and uh, anybody at that level to endorse the project so that then everybody moves in that direction. That's one of the issues that was there. Then we had to make sure we have engaged all the stakeholders. As I said, we had uh, a lot of disjointed efforts ongoing and we needed to make sure that we have funding put together in a common port to be able to execute this at scale across the country and that could only be done if everybody put their little pockets of money into one big basket to enable that to go forward. And that created momentum that is now being seen going forward. The vendor management on technology also was an issue that we learned about on the job. Um, sometimes you want things to be done much quicker than the vendor can respond. So we had to make sure that we establish a good enough relationship with the vendor so that when the government wakes up the next day and says, we want these additional items captured, we have the ability to turn around within that time. The other thing was um, that we learned there is it was easier for us to do this in bits and pieces, as you can imagine. So we shipped out this module and a few other modules we are working on. For example, we are working on uh, delivery of um, um targeted extension messages to these farmers after they have been registered. and But we're taking a piecemeal step-by-step -step approach to doing this so that it's manageable due to the number of stakeholders and the huge interests here. This particular process, by the way, has actually also been um, specifically called out by the president of the country, His Excellency, and therefore it has that level of visibility. He has actually said that he's watching this process and so we have uh, endorsement from that level, and it's moving on well. Uh, obviously, it's expensive to undertake this exercise, and uh, so the costs keep going up and up by the day, uh, but we have uh, managed to at least set some ceilings and manage expectations of stakeholders um, so that we can remain within budget and uh, perhaps uh, postpone other kinds of things to a later date. So finally, uh, I would say if we were to summarize what we have learned from this exercise, as we proceed to create this uh, registry that will be significant and uh, inform future policy decisions based on uh, empirical evidence, because this is what we have lacked up till now. We have never really been able to say how many farmers we have, what they are growing, um, what kind of farm sizes they have, what livestock they keep, what their challenges are, until now. So we expect that over the, over the next uh, one month, the, the end of September, we should be able to have a database that we can query and actually now 
very specifically inform policy decisions based on actual statistically sound data. So in summary, it takes it takes a while. We did the best in terms of planning, but there were always things popping up and you really just have to be agile and be able to prepare for a long process. This has been in the making since uh, 2021 or 2020, as I've said, and it's only now that it's taking off. So today is a definitive day. I'm glad I was able to make the presentation at this point. So with that, um, I think I've done my 20 minutes. I would like to leave it there and uh, hand it back to you, Valentina. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a very interesting case from Kenya, as, the, as Mr. Wilfred said, is something happening as we speak. And we would like to commend you for uh, this, uh, the beginning of the data collection of, of more than uh, work, work done by more than 15,000 uh, data collectors. And once the database is ready, we will be able to discuss again, and you will be able to tell us the lessons learned that you will be able to gather uh, during the process. We see in this case the importance of uh, collaboration among different stakeholders, the key role of the government in endorsing the initiative that has allowed to uh, sensitize this sector that also has the support of His Excellency, the President of Kenya. Uh, so it is uh, something important of that relevance and also the importance of the fact that these processes are participatory uh, including dialogue, uh, uh, but was also uh, part of the training uh, of these data collectors that are starting their work today in this huge mission of being able to collect uh, and survey this information. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, in case the audience has questions or comments, you may uh, jot them down so we can discuss it during the Q&A session at the end of our presentations. Or you can raise your hand uh, once the presentations are done. Once again, thank you very much. We are going to go into the next case now. Before that, let me remind you that there is interpretation available uh, into English, French, uh, Portuguese, Spanish, and Arabic, and we're also recording the session, uh, so you uh, can also find it in the regional technical platform that is available at the link in this chat. Um, we are going to go now into the Jordan case. Uh, our uh, colleague uh, Marco de Milato, uh, coordinator of the uh, FSC in uh, Jordan, and Dr. Haldalesa, head of projects of the Ministry of Agriculture in Jordan. You have 25 minutes uh, for your presentation. I'll let you know when you're left with only two minutes so you can start wrapping up your presentation. So please uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Valentina, and good morning, everyone. Thanks also to your office and uh, the organizer for this uh, webinar, which I believe is coming on the right time. I think uh, there is a good momentum for uh, uh, farmer registries that are uh, being developed in several countries, and it's good to share experience, challenges, lessons learned. Uh, so thanks for uh, for this. And uh, I'm here. My name is Marco De Milato. I'm the project manager for FAO Jordan. I'm based in Amman and have been uh, working since the last couple of years in developing the what we call JAMIS, which is an integrated agriculture management information system. Um, the system has been developed and designed within a larger program okay so it's only one output of a larger program that is focused on different other sectors we have livelihood support we have forestry and we have refugee support uh, so this is only one small aspect and uh, the project is uh, funded by the european union and uh, is implemented in uh, two countries the, which is uh, lebanon and uh, and Jordan, and the title is Enhancing Resilient Livelihood and Food Security of Host Community and Syrian Refugees in Jordan and Lebanon through the promotion of sustainable agricultural development. So the project is uh, implemented by three UN agencies, the Rome-based UN agencies, which is FAO, IFAD, and World Food Programme. 
and is implemented in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture in Jordan and the Ministry of Agriculture in uh, Lebanon. Next. Um, this particular registry has been uh, designed in collaboration with uh, FAO Lebanon. They started working on this since the last few years and they piloted it. And uh, what we are presenting here is a customization of their system, which also took into consideration the previous experience of other countries, including Kenya, the Kiamis, including Zambia, that we studied and analyzed before starting the design of Jamis in Jordan. Um, it has uh, three main elements. The first one is the farmer registry. The second one, we will see it later, is a targeting module. And the third one is an e-voucher management module. The farmer registry has one central system and the server uh, is installed at the MODI, the Ministry of Digitalization in, uh, in Jordan. So it's not in FAO, but it's directly installed and we are using the server of the government of Jordan. We supported the Ministry of Agriculture in Jordan to rehabilitate and equip 22 centers. And we have also the possibility of mobile units because we provide also tablets to the enumerators of the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, they can uh, register the um, farmers at uh, their own farms. They can move all around Jordan and register farmers. We have a target of 50,000 uh, farmers to be registered this year, uh, even though we are aiming at registering 100% of the farmer population, which is estimated to be 120,000 farmers in Jordan. We do not have the exact numbers, um, reason being because we do not have a registry uh, or an official registry uh, so far in Jordan. Um, the targeting module is looking at vulnerable farmer and we are working here with the uh, workflow program to determine and, uh, the categories that uh, will be used to target the vulnerable farmers. So we are currently conducting uh, studies with workflow program to decide the categories that will be used in the future to determine who is vulnerable and who is not vulnerable. And it will be a flexible model where uh, the vulnerability is uh, decided according to the criteria that can be identified by a specific program or a specific partner, a specific stakeholder or UN agencies, okay? You may have a program, a social protection program, which is more focused on children or more focused on women or people with disability, and you want to give different weight to this particular category. So you will be able in the targeting module to change or to tailor-made uh, the weight that you want to give to uh, any given uh, category so that you have specific list of farmers that are aligned to the objective of a specific program. We then have uh, also a third module, which is an e-voucher management modules, where uh, we will be able to uh, register also supplier and, um, uh, and products, and then give e-voucher uh, or paper voucher also um, to farmers so that they can be assisted with uh, with input all over the land. Um, next. Why an integrated agricultural management information system? I think uh, I share here, I don't want to repeat what was mentioned before by my colleague Wilfred, but we have similar challenges in Kenya. Uh, well, first of all, we wanted to support the agricultural development and the social protection action in, in the country, and as uh, we want to reduce uh, rural poverty. So as you see, the focus is not so much to increase the taxation, and this was a big debate and also big fears from the farmer when we interviewed them in the pilot phase. They were fearing of uh, 
encouraging in new taxation by the government, but actually the initial scope and the current scope is to support social protection and reduce rural poverty. As mentioned by Wilfred before, we had existing registries, okay, but uh, not a unified one, okay, so and not a complete one and not a registry that focus on agricultural sector per se, okay. So this is uh, what we found at the beginning of the project. We wanted to systematize this uh, different registering in one single unified registry. Um, in the future is not yet there. In the future, we would like also to use the registry to monitor food security and nutrition. As we speak, we are uh, working on it with the different stakeholders, but uh, the module for food security and nutrition is not yet uh, ready and, and active. The final ultimate goal is also to support the Minister of Agriculture and other ministry to develop relevant policies for social protection within the agricultural sector. Next. Uh, main stakeholder, FAO Lebanon, uh, which is uh, our uh, um, partner in this project, this regional project, targeting the two countries, Lebanon and Jordan, the Ministry of Agriculture. We have MODI, as I told you, we are using the server of MODI, Ministry of Digital Economy and Entrepreneurship. And then we have a service provider, IDS, which is based in, uh, in uh, Lebanon, and then two UN agency work food program and IFAD, and the donor is the European Union. Next. Uh, the steps and the requirements, um, which I found some similarities with the case studies in Kenya. We started with the identification of the data set to collect. How did we do that? It was not an exercise that was uh, implemented in closed door in file offices, but actually was a participatory exercise. And we invited several stakeholders, not only the Ministry of Agriculture, but Department of Statistics, farmers unions, private sector, academia. And we tried to come up with uh, uh, the ideal data set that uh, has to be considered for the farmer registry. It was not easy to find consensus. And of course, it keep changing. As we speak, actually, it's keep changing um, because we realize that certain data are relevant and uh, certain data are already there. So we just create API or linkages with the existing database from other government departments. But that was the first initial activities that uh, we have done. After that, we moved to mapping existing databases. As I told you, some databases were already there. We wanted to know who were collecting data, how, how updated were the data, and how the jammies could be linked to these existing da database. Only then we started the software design and starting with the customization of the software that was already designed in, uh, in Lebanon. We then try to implement the interoperability and linkages with other registry, as I mentioned before, and that require also some memorandum of understanding with other stakeholder like, for example, uh, uh, Department of Lands or uh, Civil Status Department, etc. Um, we then move to hardware procurement, computer, um, uh, tablets. We had internet connection. We have uh, furnitures within the registration center of the Ministry of Ag Agriculture. All this was procured by FAO and then handed over to the Ministry of Agriculture. And then we enter into the capacity building phase, where we had capacity building in different categories of partners and stakeholders, from the IT to the enumerators on the ground. And after that, the last phase, which is uh, still ongoing, we're finalizing a few minor details in these days, is the development of the SOPs. And this, the Minister of Agriculture is taking the lead, and we will have some slides uh, during this presentation. Next. 
This is just some screenshot on how the system uh, looks. Uh, we will have two versions in English and in Arabic, even though we are using only the uh, Arabic for registration and then the English is mainly for uh, dissemination, training, etc. And uh, next, we have several modules, as I told you. We'll have uh, the first one is the farmer basic information where we register all the uh, needed information, uh, not only for the farmer, but also for the household, the wife, and the number of uh, uh, people living in that particular household, etc. Next. We don't go into the detail for the sake of time, but uh, after registration, the farmer, we go and register the farm to understand which crops, which animal or fish or, bee or bees are uh, uh, and any other agricultural activities are uh, implemented in that particular farm. Next. The registration is a bit long, uh, longer than the one in Kenya. We take longer than 25 minutes, sometimes can reach up to 45. Um, but this is because we're trying to get as many data as possible. As you can see, we have farm type, farm cattle, fish, chicken, uh, bees, uh, and then we go down into the assets and even down into the workers and farm activities. Next. We have then what I mentioned before, the targeting modules. And this targeting module, as I mentioned, is flexible so that it can be tailor-made by the Ministry of Agriculture and Stakeholder. Uh, and they will be giving specific weight according to their priorities. And then they will get the list of the potential beneficiaries of uh, any specific uh, social protection activities or e-voucher program. Next. And then we have, of course, a module to manage a supplier that uh, uh, needs to register in the system so that they can supply inputs to the farmer that are eligible for any specific e-voucher program. Next. And then we have uh, also some dashboard that the Minister of Agriculture use and FAO as well, of course, to monitor and see the progress of the registration, the progress of the voucher, disaggregation by gender, disaggregation by governorates or by nationality. So there is a set of filters that they can use and they can uh, um, monitor the system on a daily basis. As we speak, well, this was a, a screenshot that was taken uh, a few days ago, but uh, we have already 9,000 uh, farmers that has been registered in, uh, in Jordan. Next. Okay, uh, I just want to mention here the uh, linkages that we were able to um, implement in uh, Jordan with the other department, particularly with the civil status, which will allow now the data to be uploaded from the civil status database. Once we enter the ID of the farmers, all the data uh, will be automatically entered into the registry in uh, JAMIS. Similarly, with the Department of Land, we created some linkages so that data will be shared between JAMIS and the Department of uh, Land. Same with the Amman Chamber of Commerce, public security, and then SMS companies to share messages with uh, um, with the farmers and with the Minister of Agriculture Extension Services. Next. What are the future potential? Uh, we would like to, uh, in the near future, to design a module for e-extension services as well as traceability of product. We are working on it and uh, hopefully soon we will have this module integrated into JAMIS. Uh, of course, we already have the farmer registry launched. And as we speak, the enumerators of the Minister of Agriculture are registering farmers on a daily basis. And uh, we are working on a food security and nutrition monitoring. We would like to have this monitoring tool uh, ready, hopefully by the next year, to monitor food security and nutrition. And then through the e-voucher, um, we are uh, aiming at uh, increasing social support to the to the farmer. Um, next, uh, 
Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we are in a process of, together with the Ministry of Agriculture, developing the SOPs. And uh, um, I would like to give the floor now to the Ministry of Agriculture, Khalid and uh, my colleague, Wurud. They will uh, uh, present you the SOPs and the progress and the challenges that we had in uh, coming up with, the, let's say, the legal framework related to it. Over to you, uh, Khalid. Thank you very much. Khalid Mana Marco. Khalid here? No. Yes. Masa al khair lal jamia. Ana bahib arif kum an nafsi. Ana al mohandi saurud al abadi. Aamal fi qita al irshad fi wazart al zira al urduniya. Bil bidaya bahib ashkur al fao. Ala hai al liqaat al muhimma. Aw tabadu al khibrat. وخصوصا بهذا النظام المهم وبشكر يعني سبيشال ثانكس فور ماركو اوفيس فاو ان جوردان لدعمهم الكبير لهذا النظام هلا هذا النظام بالنسبه لنا احنا نظام كثير مهم وكان بالنسبه لنا يعني نافذه لامور كثير فلذلك احنا هذا النظام كان فقط للارشاد عملنا وسعنا مهامه وصار كنظام وطني يضم فيه الستيك هولدر بشكل واسع الوزارات عديد من الشركاء والوزارات راح يدخلوا بهذا النظام في البدايه نيكست نيكست بليز في البدايه احنا عملنا مراجعه لكافه التعليمات الترخيص اللي كافة القطاعات النباتية والحيوانية وعملنا توحيد لهذه التعليمات حتى تتوافق مع هذا النظام والنظام يتوافق معه هاي نقطة نقطة الثانية حددنا مين هم الستيك هوردر مين الوزارات مين الهيئات الدولية اللي لها علاقة بهذا النظام وأخذنا, وأخذنا رأيهم بعين الاعتبار في التعديلات اللي صارت على النظام por desgracia, por desgracia no estamos escuchando la interpretación al español. وأصدرنا تعليمات خاصة بهذا النظام تتوافق مع الأنظمة والتشريعات الأخرى بوزارة الزراعة حتى ما يصير في أي تضارب وأي خلاف. Miss Wurud, sorry for interrupting. We are trying. We are trying حتى ما يصير في أي تضارب وأي خلاف بهذا الموضوع. بالإضافة إنه كان عندنا إحنا بوزارة الزراعة لجان لجان ترخيص لجان عمالة وافدة. هذا كله عملنا إعادة تشكيلها بحيث يعني بعين الاعتبار نأخذ هذا النظام يصبح كمرجعية أساسية لكافة القطاعات بوزارة الزراعة. بليز نيكست. Sorry, Miss Wurud, we are trying to fix the yeah. translation yes. in Arabic, so maybe you can just give us a few minutes. We are trying to to fix the translation. Next, please. Do you hear me? Next. Yeah. Do, do you hear me? Pero dice sí. Hello. Can, can you hear me? Hello. Marco? Yes, yes, we're all. They are fixing okay, the yeah. translation. Yeah, just a few no, minutes. No, no, okay. no, it's working. 
not now it's working so you can go ahead sorry sorry for that now it's working okay great world you can proceed yes okay thank you marco can uh هدفنا من الاس او بيز بشكل اساسي اولا اعداد دليل اجراءات تشغيليه واضحه للجميع والعاملين على هذا النظام في وزاره الزراعه او في الخارج وزاره الزراعه كان الهدف الثاني وهو الاهم ان يكون في موثوقيه وشفافيه في البيانات والمعلومات يعني بحيث ان يكون عندنا نسبه الخطا في هاي في جمع البيانات وادخالها وتوثيقها يكون نسبه قليله بقدر الامكان والهدف الثالث وهو الأهم هو استدامة النظام واستمرارية إدخال وتوثيق الحيازات. Please next. 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 زي ما شرح زميلنا ماركو أقسام الـ الـ النظام الأقسام تتوافق تماما مع دليل الإجراءات دليل الإجراءات تقسم في الصلاحيات استدامة النظام تعليمات التوثيق سواء الإنتاج النباتي أو الإنتاج الحيواني والقسم الأخير القسم الحملات والقسائم والاستهداف Next please نيكست اوكي هلا ايش يعني مستوى الصلاحيات مستوى الصلاحيات قسمناها لاربع صلاحيات اللي اللي بيقوم بعمليه الادخال ليس هو نفسه اللي بيدقق فبالتالي اول مستوى احنا رح نشتغل فيه المرشد الزراعي يقوم بادخال معلومات المزارع ومعلومات عنه وعن حياسته في بيجي ليفل اعلى من من نول بالاداء بمانجمنت ليفل بيجي بدقق بفعل الحيازه في حاله وجود اي تعديل او خطا كان مو الشخص في شخص ثالث اعلى اداريا منهم وهو بيقوم بتدقيق التعديل وعمله اعاده تعديله على النظام هلا في بي خلال العمل يمكن يصير عندنا اطلاع في يعني القطاعات الثانية عشان متخذي القرار بهمهم إنهم يطلعوا على النظام ولكن هذا أعطيناه صلاحية منفصلة وهي صلاحية الاطلاع فقط دون الـ 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 يدخلوا بتفاصيل الحيازات يعني مثل التقارير العامة اللي أظهرها اللي شرح عنها زميلنا ماركو بليز نيكست نيكست You hear me? Yeah. على على موضوع صلاحية الإدخال. في من هم اللي لهم صلاحية الإدخال؟ المرشد الزراعي، المهندس الإنتاج النباتي والمهندس الإنتاج الحيواني. مين بيدقق؟ حكينا الهيد أوف ديبارتمنت أوف أند ديفيجن أوف بلانت أند أنيمال وولز. ورؤساء الاقسام للارشاد الزراعي، التعديل حكينا المدراء المديريات المركزيه او الالويه، في عندنا احنا الاي دي طباعه بطاقه المزارع هو صلاحيه شخص واحد في المديريه وهو رئيس قسم الارشاد لهذه الهويه لانه هذه الهويه فيما بعد يترتب عليها امور قانونيه وتشريعية مهمة فلذلك احنا اختصرنا صلاحية طباعة هذه البطاقة لشخص واحد فقط اما صلاحية الاطلاع على النظام كافة القطاعات الفنية بوزارة الزراعة سواء الوزير ومساعدي قطاع الثروة الحيوانية النباتية لانه هذا اللي يترتب على هذا النظام مزيد من القرارات المهمة فلذلك عملنا صلاحية الاطلاع فقط دون الولوج إلى النظام في حالة التعديل هلا إحنا حكينا التع... إذا صار في تعديل على أي نظام على أي معلومة كانت يمنع الإضا... مثلا إضافة حيازة أو تم المزارع عدل أو غير حيازته لا... ما بصير تعديل على نفس الإدخال يتم آه عدم تفعيل الحيازة القديمة ويتم إضافة حيازة جديدة ل... آه عشان يصير يكون عندنا مرجعية للمعلومات والبيانات السابقة في مرحلة ما في سنة ما أو شهر ما يكون إن مع مرجعية 
رقمية لهاي هذا التعديل هاي شغلة شغلة الثانية في حال انه الملك مثلا في المزارة تغيرت ملكيته كان في لمزارة A صار لمزارة B ايش بنعمل بنلغي تفعيل مزارة A ونعمل اضافة حيازة جديدة باسم المزارة الجديد اسمه مثلا for example B next next okay next yeah احنا الموضوع استدامة النظام موضوع كثير مهم فلذلك احنا قمنا بلي عشان استدامة هذا النظام ربطنا بوزارة الزراعة توثيق الحيازات بكافة الخدمات التي تقدمها وزارة الزراعة للمزارعين مثل ترخيص مثل رخص الاستيراد والتصدير مثل العمالة الوافدة أي مزارع بده خدمة من وزارة الزراعة يجب أولا أن يوثق حيازته يأخذ رقم ID لمزرعته ولإله فبالتالي بعدين يأخذ أي خدمة ثانية هاي شغلة شغلة ثانية إحنا يجب توثيق وتجديد الحيازة سنويا يعني إحنا لازم نعمل أبديت لهاي الحيازة بشكل سنوي سنة من تاريخ الإدخال عشان نضمن إنه إذا في أي تعديلات أو تغييرات على نوع الحيازة أو صاحب ملكية الحيازة إحنا نكون دائما باستمرار بالاستمرار والدقة بالجمع هلا مين مين صلاحيته يعمل يوزر صلاحيته من قبل رئيس مساعد الامين العام للارشاد بتنسيب من مدير التوثيق باستحداث اي يوزر وتحديد صلاحياته. بليز نكست. هلا هاي هون احنا اعطينا صوره عامه زي الانتاج النباتي وانتاج الحيواني ولكن كليهما احنا من نوثق سواء ال الحيازة مرخصة أو غير مرخصة إيش يعني مرخصة أو غير مرخصة يعني وضحة قانوني أو غير قانوني هاي نقطة نقطة ثانية عندنا بشروط الترخيص بوزارة الزراعة الأردنية في عدد حيازة معينة يعني إذا مثلا الإنتاج النباتي إذا كانت الحيازة أربع دنومات ترخص إذا كانت أقل من أربع دنومات لا ترخص في هذا الدليل الإجراءات سمحنا إنه إذا كان صاحب الحيازة أقل من شروط الترخيص من وثقه لأنه إحصاء المزارعين عندنا كثير مهم ولذلك إحنا سمحنا لكافة المزارعين وأصحاب الحيازات يوثقوا بحيازاتهم ولكن مثلا الإنتاج النباتي لازم يكون يملك على الأقل واحد دونم وما أكثر أقل من دونم يعتبر إذا مو مش مزارع يكون صاحب يعني مثلا حديقه منزليه فلذلك ما بنوثق له فوق الدنم بنوثق له الحيوان انتاج الحيوان كذلك في عندنا عدد معين اذا اي مزارع يملك هاي الاعداد يحق له انه يوثق بغض النظر اذا كان مرخص او غير مرخص وهذا شيء مهم كمان لاستدامه هذا النظام ذيس نيكست نيكست Next. هلا بنحكي عن موضوع كثير مهم وهو موضوع اجراءات التحقق وضبط الجوده. احنا اخذنا بعين الاعتبار اجراءات التحقق وضبط الجوده عن طريق مثلا تشكيل لجان مشتركه ما بين القطاعات قطاع الارشاد وقطاعات الفنيه وقطاع المشاريع لتدقيق وتحقق من الحيازات المسجله ولا يجب انه مثلا ما كل سنه هاي اللجنه تنزل على الميدان وتتاكد من المعلومات بشكل عشوائي الحيازات المسجله بالنظام احنا افترضنا انه في مراحل معينه الاخطاء اذا صار في اخطاء لكل حاله حطينا اجراء اداري معين في حال اذا الاخطاء كانت اقل من 5% أو خطأ كان نسبة الخطأ من خمسة لعشرة أو ما يزيد من العشرة حطينا إجراءات مخالفات إذا كان حدث أي مخالفات بهاي النسب لكل وضع له يعني نحكي عقوبات أو لفت انتباه أو لفت انذار لهاي اللجان أو العاملين على هذا النظام بليز نكست 
يعني على سبيل المثال اذا في النقطه الاخيره انه اذا كان نسبه الخطا اكثر من 10% شو بنعمل احنا كاداره مركزيه اذا وجدنا اخطاء في مديريه ما او في محافظه ما اخطاء يفوق 10% مباشره يتم لفت نظر بهذه اللجنه اعاده تشكيلها كليا بالاضافه انه توجيههم للتحقيق والسير في العقوبات المق... المعمول فيها عندنا بنظام الخدمه المدنيه نيكست واخيرا النظام الحملات والقسائم عندنا احنا جزئين حملات وتمويل والاستهداف كذلك وزعنا الصلاحيات بناء على المديريات الفنيه والقائمين على هاي الجزئيه وهو قطاع المشاريع في وزاره الزراعه بنوزع صلاحياتهم كلا حسب المستوى الاداري ودوره في هذا النظام وانا شاكره لكم جميعا وبتمنى ان اكون اعطي اعطيت موجز عن اهم الاجراءات التشريعيه اللي اخذناها بدليل الاجراءات التشغيليه وشكرا Khalid would you like to add something Yes do you hear me Yes أه شكرا ماركو شكرا لزميلتي ورود بس الظاهر انه ما بتقدر هي تسمع الصوت من عندنا في عندنا مختلف صوت أه برضه اشكر زميلي من كينيا لتقديم العرض المميز أه بالحقيقه انا لاحظت من عرض كينيا أن انه تقريبا طبيعه القطاع الزراعي باختلاف الدول متشابه أه في البدايه حاب اقدم او اعرف المملكه الاردنيه الهاشميه هي تقع في قلب الشرق الاوسط قرب عدد السكان من 11 مليون 20% من السكان هم من اللاجئين الاغلبيه اللاجئين من الجنسيه السوريه هذا النظام نظام توفيق الحيازات في الحقيقه اداء في الوقت المناسب وكنا من اكبر التحديات التي واجهناها خلال كوفيد 19 هي عدم توفر البيانات والمعلومات عن المزارعين في المملكه الاردنيه الهاشميه بحيث انه نعرف انه الاغلاقات اللي تمت خلال جائحه كورونا سببت عدم وصول المزارعين الى مناطقهم بسبب معرفه الحكومه ووزاره الزراعه بالبيانات الكامله عن عن المزارعين للتمكن من اصدار التصاريح اللازمه للمرور في الوقت المناسب وبالتالي فان نقص البيانات الكبيره والكبير في وزاره الزراعه اتى مشروع مدد الممول من الاتحاد الاوروبي في قياده السيد زميلنا ماركو تابع لمنظمه الاغذيه والزراعه الفاو بالاردن لتنفيذ هذا المشروع في محاوره الاربعه كان احد هذه المحاور المهمه جدا هو نظام توثيق الحيازات آه، هذا النظام زي ما حكى زميلي ما بدي اعيد اكرر الحديث مره اخرى وكما ايضا شرحت زميلتي باسهاب عن الاس او بيز والاجراء الدليل التشغيلي لهذا النظام النظام اخذ بعين الاعتبار آه، احنا بنعرف او او حاب اعرفكم انه بالاردن عندنا جنسيات مختلفه آه، اي ان المزارعين هناك مزارعين اردنيين ومزارعين ايضا من جنسيات اخرى هناك عمالة من الجاليات الأجنبية التي تعمل في القطاع الزراعي كأصحاب استثمارات أو ضمانات بالإضافة إلى العمالة المباشرة في القطاع الزراعي وبالتالي عدم توفر البيانات كان يؤدي إلى أن نظام القطاع الزراعي في الأردن هو نظام هو قطاع عشوائي أو أكثر القطاعات عشوائية في الأردن العماله في هذا القطاع ايضا فيها نوع من العشوائيه وبالتالي احدث النظام او نتامل ان يحدث النظام نقله نوعيه في تنظيم القطاع الزراعي والعوامل المرتبطه فيه من العماله والاليات والخدمات المقدمه للمزارعين لنستطيع النهوض بالقطاع الزراعي. Interpretation into Spanish available. 
يوادي بشكل غير مباشر يصل الى حوالي 26% من الناتج القومي الاجمالي وبالتالي هناك ايضا بطاله مرتفعه بين الشباب في الاردن نسعى من خلال توفير البيانات وتحديث الانظمه الى تحقيق فرص عمل في هذا القطاع وكما اشار جلاله الملك عبد الله سوري سوري فور انترابتد يو هاف 1 مينيت ليفت تو اند ذيس برزنتيشن ثانك يو اشار جلاله الملك عبد الله الثاني حسين الى ان اهم القطاعات التي تستطيع ان توعب تستوعب البطاله وتمتص البطاله في الاردن هو القطاع الزراعي وبالتالي اولى اهتمام مهم جدا اللي يضيق الوقت سوف اذهب الى السلايد الاخير وهو عمليه التارجتنج والاي فاوتر عمليه الاستهداف هي احد مفاجات هذا النظام سوف يكون هناك تعريف لكل الستيك هولدرز والناس اللي لهم علاقه مباشره بالسبلاير لمختلف الخدمات الى وزاره الزراعه بحيث يتم ادخالهم وتسجيلهم على النظام نتمكن لاحقا من توزيع هذه الخدمات بعداله على مستحقيها من المزارعين فمثلا في حال توفر فند في مجال الوقايه النباتيه في البوبيدات او الاسمده او المعدات الزراعيه تكون لدينا قاعده البيانات الواضحه التي تعلمنا ان هذا هذه الفئه من المزارعين لديها الحاجه لهذا النوع من الخدمات او لذلك النوع من الخدمات وبالتالي هذا النظام بمجمله سوف يعمل نقله نوعيه للقطاع الزراعي وتنظيمه في الاردن. شكرا جزيلا على الاستماع وشكرا لكم. Thank you, Khaled. Over to you, Valentina. Thank you very much for this presentation. Muchísimas gracias por la presentación eh, y por tomarse el tiempo de participar. Thank you very much for the presentation and for the taking the time of sharing eh, your experience. La, uh, a very interesting um, case. Uh, that you presented, not only involving the Ministry of Agriculture, but other ministries, and also of involving the existing uh, records and uh, unify them into a single one that is focused on um, farming, that is very necessary to be able to develop uh, these uh, differentiated public policies for uh, the sector and to um, connect uh, with the uh, work uh, strategies of the government that may adapt to specific needs. Thank you very much for also expanding the, re the registry in order to provide digital services. Also, thank you very much for showing visually how the platform operates and the importance of uh, having these uh, procedures and objectives as well defined, as you told us, uh, with verification processes and quality control processes that enable uh, the sustainability of this registry. So thank you very much. Uh, it's also very interesting to see how in different parts of the world um, uh, there, uh, there are these uh, thriving initiatives of uh, farmers and registry. And we also see uh, significant support from governments as well. Uh, we also saw this in this session, in this previous session, and we will continue to see this in the third session with cases from other parts of the world. Thank you again. We'll now go into uh, to the last uh, segment of this uh, session, which is the Q&A uh, segment. For those who would like to ask questions, you can uh, click on uh, your button to raise your hand, and you have three minutes to ask your questions. And uh, please also, if you can introduce yourselves before speaking and to specify who you are addressing, please. Uh, we also have some questions on the chat. You can also uh, keep on writing down your questions. So we will go uh, through the first uh, round of q and I I don't know if anyone has uh, raised a hand. If not, we will focus on the questions posted in the chat. So we will ask uh, two questions to uh, for both cases. Cases. The first one is, uh, is there uh, a characterization for farmers? Is there any operational definition that uh, uh, distinguishes these farmers that are being part of this registry? And also, is there any legal framework associated to maintaining the uh, records of the registry that you introduced? So, I'd like to offer the floor uh, first to uh, Mr. Wilfred. Are you still with us? Are you still there? 
responder a estas dos preguntas y luego pasamos a usted. Adelante, Mr. Wilfer, si puede responder a estas dos preguntas. Y luego pasamos al siguiente caso. Thank you, Valentín, and thank you, everyone, for your uh, questions and also for the presentation from my colleagues. Um, in terms of the first question of the operational definition of a farmer, um, in our teams here, we've actually spent quite a bit of time debating that. And we have also been borrowing heavily from the experiences in other places, for example, in the US, some of the definitions the USDA has uh, defined. We have essentially been um, trying to come up with a standard definition. So we do have a manual, and um, but to be honest, we haven't nailed it exactly. Uh, but we are we are currently in the process of setting some minimum thresholds so that, for example, if someone has one chicken, they don't qualify as a chicken farmer. And so we are actually in the process of defining what thresholds will be applied going forward. And we are hoping that from this exercise of collecting the approximately 6 million plus records that we are anticipating, by doing some analysis of that, we will be able to come up with a clearer operational definition. But I wish my colleague from the Ministry of Agriculture of Kenya was here because he has been at the forefront. And I believe there's some definitions they have come up with, but I'm not able to execute that at this point. So I'll leave it at that. In terms of the legal framework for the data that we are collecting, in 2019, Kenya passed a law known as the Data Protection Act, and that act has uh, provisions for the rights of the data subject and the responsibilities of the data uh, processors, such as ourselves. And it does stipulate, for example, um, certain rights that the data subject has, like if they wish for us to delete their record, there's a procedure that they can use to opt out. And also for us as data um, uh, processors, we are not allowed to use the data beyond the originally stated purpose for which we collected it, unless we go back to the data subject and obtain consent. So that act has broad provisions for what we can and cannot do with the data and also the modus operandi for accessing that data and um, using it going forward. So let me leave it at that. Thank you. Back to you, Valentina. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. The same two questions, if we can ask those two questions for the second case. Mr. Marco Halid, uh, if you could answer uh, these two questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Valentina. And uh, let me try to answer, and then maybe Khaled or Wurud may have some integration. But yes, uh, similarly to the case of uh, Kenya, the definition of farmer is actually probably one of the first challenge that we had to face at the beginning of the project. Um, because there was not an official definition of who is the farmer, who is not a farmer. And uh, as we speak, two entities are trying to come up with the definition. This is the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the Department of Statistics. And they are using a definition which are recognized internationally, including definition by uh, by FAO and other UN agencies. Okay, so we do not have it yet. We are in the process together with the Minister of Agriculture to uh, define. So as we speak, we are registering all the people or actors involved in the agricultural sectors. Okay, despite the sites of their land, despite the income, the gain from uh, uh, the agricultural activities. We collect all the data and uh, hopefully soon we will be able to get a definition of, uh, of a farmer. Um, we do not have an act or a law specifically for the farmer registry, but uh, my colleague Ruud presented before all the SOP, all the regulation that the Minister of Agriculture in the last few months came up to regulate the 
collection of data, the validation of data. Uh, we have been uh, discussing also about security, privacy, confidentiality, and all the data. I'm not sure if this is the same for the case of Kenya, but the data are not owned by FAO, are not old in FAO, but they are in the uh, government hands and government uh, server. Okay, so this, I hope I answer the question. I don't know if Khalid or Wurud, you want to add something, maybe in English, considering I understand there is some uh, problem and challenges with the Arabic translation. So probably is, uh, you tell me, Valentina, if you prefer that we try to speak uh, in English with our colleague uh, and the Minister of Agriculture, Jordan. If it's possible, it would be great if they could speak in English due to the problem with the translation. Okay. Khalid, do you have, or do you have any other uh, uh, okay. integration on the definition of farmer or on the legal framework? Yes, Marco, thank you. Uh, as you know, uh, as you said, uh, Marco, uh, the definition of uh, farmer is uh, big challenges in Jordan as in different countries. Uh, uh, FEO and the Ministry of Agriculture did a lot of negotiation about this one and to try to uh, work and define the, the, the farmer. But uh, uh, for a special case in the farm registration system uh, uh, in Jordan, uh, we try to collect uh, the information who has the, the, the farmer who has uh, who have uh, at least uh, a point one hectare one zone. 1,000 square meter and uh, the, the, and uh, the, the production uh, not for the household level, uh, but also he sells some products from this uh, uh, one. Day. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Khaled. Over to you, Valentina. Thank you very much. Ahora vamos con las últimas tres preguntas. We'll, we'll now go into eh, the last three questions. Primero para Kenia, First, luego para uh, Kenia, eh, and then for Alberto uh, uh, Floto, Marco Jalil eh, Gurut. Mr. Wilfred, hay tres preguntas que nos gustaría desarrollar ahora. Primero, uh, si es for you, los Wilfred, productores, first, uh, if, uh, los datos que se levantan farmers, de los productores, the data from que farmers or growers and that are recorded, are those organized or sorted? are individual eh, uh, sobre, uh, data points. Hay, the question is also about one of the data that are queried es, or is the email address. And, and público, uh, si es some que people es from una, the audience would like to know if this is a frequent tool that is used among farmers, email. And also a question about how este proceso, farmers perceive en, this uh, en process en Kenya. Adelante, Mr. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. Um, the first one I, I didn't get completely clearly, but I guess it was about. Could you please repeat the first one, please, Valentina? If the farmers' data or the data that are surveyed or collected are uh, data from uh, organizations of uh, agriculture of farmers or associations of farmers, or are these individual farmers? Thank you very much. I get it now. So the data we are collecting at the moment for what I presented is of individual farmers and particularly the heads of those farming households. We do, however, have a different survey process, a different data collection process, which registers the institutional farms. And that's been run separately, particularly by the National Statistics Office and also the commercial farms. So those are handled separately. But in this particular exercise, we are collecting data about the individual farmer, and we are collecting items such as the GPS of the farm or the household structure, whichever is uh, actually it's the household structure at this point. We plan to also map the farms themselves by collecting polygons of the physical locations of the farms. And uh, we do collect the email address. We collect their mobile telephone number. We collect um, their personal ID. In Kenya, everyone has a personal ID, which has a number that you use to access government services. We do not communicate with them via email as far as I know. What we use is by mobile SMS. 
And uh, one of the things we, we do, well, let's say two primary things we do once we collect that mobile number is we are able to send them um, voucher codes which allow them to get discounts for shopping through that SMS service, which we have tested in our pilot as well. We also plan to do extension services using that very code by sending them targeted messages. So because we collect which crops they grow, which livestock they keep, we plan to be able to, for example, send potato-related messages specifically to potato farmers and specifically to those in a very uh, targeted area uh, by using all that information that is there. The last question of what is the perspective of farmers of uh, with regard to this? Um, occasionally, farmers have um, been uh, resistant because they have thought that uh, this process might have to do with uh, tax collection or uh, other uh, initiatives of uh, the government, which would incur costs to them. But when we have done a proper sensitization, they have realized that being on this common registry, they also get benefits, such as the vouchers I've just talked about, and they also get targeted messages. And one of the other things we want to do is to also help farmers aggregate into groups so that they can learn from one another and access markets more profitably. So as long as we have explained the message well, farmers have been um, very welcoming of this exercise. Back to you, Valentina. Great, thank you. So, ahora vamos a las mismas tres preguntas. So the eh, same three questions uh, for Marco, for Halid and Guru. Please uh, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Valentina. I think. Uh, Similarly to what uh, my colleague Wilfred mentioned, we are collecting information at uh, individual level and not at group or co uh, cooperatives. And uh, we also target the heads of the households and then get information also about the other members of the household. But the interview is for individual farmers and not groups or cooperatives. Um, the main means of communication is not email. We collect the email, but when we need to communicate with the farmer, we use SMS, we use phone. This is in Jordan, the most common uh, communication tool that is used when you want to communicate with, uh, uh, with farmers. So SMS is working uh, very well. Uh, in terms of perception, similarly, uh, Initially, in the pilot, I mentioned before, there were some fears of taxation. Uh, I cannot say that fear is not there now. Uh, let's see how it goes, the registration. But I can tell you that uh, we are starting a sensitization campaign through video, through social media, through poster, through SMS. And uh, similarly, the farmers are uh, understanding the positive impact that uh, the farmer registry can have in their livelihood by receiving support, receiving extension services, receiving e-voucher, discounts, etc. So we are hoping that uh, with this uh, sensitization campaign, we are able to tackle their fear and their uh, resistance. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, Halid, and Burut. We really apologize for the translation in Arabic. We will make sure that this does not happen again, so we're very sorry. Uh, dear participants, uh, thank you very much for your very valuable contributions, for your questions, and we hope you have been able to clarify some of your doubts, and uh, hopefully we will be able to hold a more in-depth uh, discussions about uh, your presentations and your uh, national contexts. Uh, we thank the participation of panelists uh, for sharing their experiences and for um, sharing your knowledge about the design and implementation of uh, family farming registries. Now I'd like to offer the floor to uh, Pedro Boareto in charge of uh, family farming in uh, the Latin American and Caribbean FAO office who will uh, share his final 
comments with us. Thank you, Valentina, colleagues, Marco, Wilfred, Alid, Ruth, for uh, presenting these cases from Jordan and from Kenya. I would like to again apologize uh, for the problem that we had with the Arabic uh, translation and uh, to all our panelists. But these are challenges uh, that form part uh, of uh, uh, activities of this nature with, that have a global uh, scope. What uh, we are uh, viewing uh, throughout these uh, sessions is that indeed uh, there are a whole series of uh, uh, institutional uh, uh, perspectives uh, for the design and implementation of uh, family farming registries. And uh, uh, there has to be a commitment on the part of governments and a political commitment in terms of their capability to build uh, alliances uh, for these uh, registries. Uh, these can be international alliances or partnerships with other uh, ministries or other public institutions and also with the public that uh, are the farmers who are indeed the main beneficiaries uh, of this process. In the case of uh, Jordan and in the case of Kenya, we also see that there is a dimension related uh, to uh, the time needed for uh, registration, we need to have uh, um, obtain uh, relevant data, and uh, all this reinforces uh, the, the importance of uh, the commitment on the part of different uh, stakeholders, and there is also a dimension related to costs. There are costs associated uh, to this, uh, financial costs, that uh, teach us uh, that uh, the registry is not a solution that will be created overnight, but that requires a continuous uh, uh, perspective. Updating is something permanent. Uh, the maintenance of the registry as a tool to guide public action uh, requires uh, that uh, permanent uh, commitment. And there is another uh, dimension that we will pro discuss in greater depth uh, during our next uh, session, and uh, that is uh, mentioned in the two steps that we have viewed here, and that is how this will link up with uh, the actions of the state. Uh, this is not an isolated uh, tool in different uh, institutions because its objective is uh, to link this uh, to public actions, uh, to uh, policy programs, uh, to social protection actions. And that is indeed the reflection that we must discuss in greater depth uh, during the third session that we will be holding in October. The registry enables us uh, to strengthen uh, the commitment of the state uh, with agriculture, with farmers, and enables us uh, uh, to make them visible so that we can guide uh, state policies. It is not simply an information tool, but uh, has uh, some concrete uh, objectives. So we hope that you have enjoyed uh, uh, this uh, event. I thank uh, the colleagues from the Executive Secretariat of the and the Central American Council on uh, Livestock and Farming and Livestock. Uh, the Secretariat of uh, Mercosur, uh, who are also supporting us in the coordination of this event, uh, and who have been able to participate and uh, support uh, us uh, with uh, case studies and everything that we're discussing here. Thank you very much, everyone, and thank you, Valentina, for your participation. Thank you, Pedro. We would like to say that the recording of this session will be in the Regional Technical Secretariat platform for Family Agriculture in the link that we have placed in the chat, and I would also like to reinforce uh, the fact uh, that on October 5th we will have hold uh, the third session uh, of this event and we will be talking about the link between the registry and differentiated public policies for this family farming sector. So thank you very much for your time, willingness and participation and we hope uh, to meet again during the th uh, third session on October 5th. Thank you very much and goodbye.